Praise the Lord, everyone, and good morning. Uh, welcome to Apostolic Lighthouse Church. I'm Pastor Donnie Huslich. It is a blessing like no other to be with you this Monday morning. It is uh, August 17th. Well, you know, just time is moving along. Somebody, you know, kicked it around with me the other day and said, uh, you know, we've been at this five months. I said, no, we've almost been at this six months. I mean, if you check your time, you'll see that we've almost been at the COVID thing for six months. That is in itself incredible. And uh, I, I'm just glad to have made it to this part to be able to see things clear. I think a lot of things about COVID have been incredibly good for us. And that is that it has taken away some of those comfortable things that have kept us in the dark and things that have kept us in a place of, uh, you know, complacency, apathy and complacency, both of those. Uh, it's a good thing to look those up on Google if you have a, a smartphone. A complacency, look it up and look at the definition. And then apathy, look that up and look at the definition. <clears throat> those are conditions that actually cause us to uh, not be too concerned about things. And I, I will tell you that this is a time to be concerned. And uh, just for everybody, the remainder of this week, or probably the whole week, we'll see how far we get, but starting tomorrow, I will be talking about some of the end-time events that are going on in our world today. Now, I'm, I'm going to approach this a little different. I don't want to be one of those that just hypes everything up. I want to find the neutral ground and how to navigate one world order, the mark of the beast. Um, and I know those are, those are cliches almost at this point. Uh, they're things that we've heard so much of, but... Really, how do we navigate? I think, uh, I'll just put this on top. Um, I think, well, let me save that till tomorrow, what I think. I'll be talking to you tomorrow about it. But today, I want to talk to you about a very critical and crucial component of our life. Uh, the other day, I sat down with a very good friend of mine. He, uh, he has been living for God for quite a few years, <clears throat> at least 20 years, if not more, and has a very sound and complete home. I, I want to mention that, uh, that if people don't have their act together, you probably don't need to be listening to them too much. This person has their act together. They've really made an effort to change society and change others. I, I won't give you all the details, but just take my word for it. As you examine them, I'm their pastor, and as, you, as I examine them, I just find some incredible stuff. Well, I sat down with that person, and I know they're a good person, good Christian person, all those things. And they just looked at me solid and said, listen, I followed your advice. And I said, what advice is that? He said, I have made it my goal this year to read the Word of God completely through. You know, I wasn't stunned. I'm not stunned at anything anymore. I've had all kinds of crazy things come my way. You know, if you would have caught me 15 years ago and said, are you perfectly faithful to your Bible reading? I would have said no. Today I can say, absolutely, I am faithful to my Bible reading beyond almost anything else. Uh, I, You know, I am literally committed to the Word of God. I've got to plunge into the depths every single day, every morning if possible. I jump off my diving board right head first into the waters of the Word. I, I just do it because it is life-changing. Well, this dear friend of mine looked at me and said something that was just, to me, is utterly profound, and it's a testimony of what God can do. And he just said, it is changing my life. It is speaking to my spirit. I want to tell all of you dummies out there that refuse to listen. I'm telling you once again, I'm like a broken record. Every time I come around to that loop, I'm going to I'm going to hit that spot. Get into the word. Get into the word. Get into the word. Get into the word. It is the only thing that will give you buoyancy during times of insanity. It will hold on to your mind. It'll help wrap those cords of anointing around your mind and keep you from coming undone. The Word of God is full of life. It is God's Word to us. Trust it. Put your confidence in it. Amen. Don't listen to the naysayers. There's people out there. There's modern theologians that try to convince you that it is an old book. It has nothing to do with us today. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, Paul, Peter, all of them were writing to eternity. 
And I'm going to tell you, just just wading off into it, literally like getting in the canoe, pushing off from the shore, getting out there and learning how to paddle in it is incredible. And one of the best tools for that is the U version. You've heard it from me probably almost a hundred times now. If you are not able and not having success in your Bible reading and spending time in the Word, you version will help you be proactive. Get with somebody who can show you how to make it work, how to how to make it fit your schedule. Uh, I've got tons of ideas on how to make it connect up, so please get with me. Get into the Word. Now, let's talk about that. Who the Bible says you are. Here's what the Bible will tell you about you for those who are wondering who they are. You are an heir of God and a co-heir with Christ. That's Romans 8, 17. You're an heir with God. In other words, you're put up there, you're his image, and you are a co-heir with Christ in that component where deity and humanity connect. You are pulled into that being a component of what God is doing. Amen. You are eternal like an angel. 1 Corinthians 9 and 25. You have a crown that will last forever. Wow, I have a crown? Wow, that's from the word 1 Corinthians 9, 20, 25 also. You are a holy priest. 1 Peter 2 and 5. You are a treasured possession. Exodus 19 and 5. Stop talking bad about yourself. You're a treasured possession of God. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter how you felt today. Your hair was out of whack. You've got a twitch. You've got a stomach ache. Whatever. It doesn't matter. You're an heir. You're an heir and a treasured possession of God. Exodus 19 and 5. You are chosen before the creation of the world. Ephesians 1 and 4. God chose you. Stop telling yourself that you're worthless. Stop telling yourself that you're insignificant. You're not important. Stop turning your eyes away when you should be turning your eyes up. Amen. Hallelujah. With the power of God, you can overcome anything. God is with you. Hallelujah. You are destined for praise, fame, and honor. Think about that. Deuteronomy 26 and 19. What an incredible. You were destined for praise, for fame, and for honor. You are going to go out with a bang because God's going to do something in your life. You are God's child, 1 John 3 and 1. These are just, these are all from uh, Max Lucado's book. Uh, it's called He Still Moves Stones, and Max Lucado is quite a writer. But what an encouragement to know that's in the Word of God. Here's some of the things you will get from reading your Bible, from listening or reading the Word of God. It provides direction for those who constantly need some kind of new direction or whatever. You can find it in the Word of God. You can literally... You don't have to have somebody dictating your direction. You can find it in the Word of God. Now, it's great to have mentors. It's great to have coaches. It is incredible. I mean, matter of fact, the Scripture commands you to have a pastor, to command you to have some kind of covering over you. And literally, they will speak into your life, but that will not replace the Word of God. And you need to become a student of the Word of God. Allow the Word to speak into your ear, into your inner ear, into your spirit. You've got to get to a place where the, the Word of God is speaking into your spirit. The other day I was reading uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, 10, 11, all of that. And literally in the middle of that, I just discovered so much about the personality of Paul and how he was reaching for people. It just really stirred me up. His passion for people, his frustration with people, it was it was just literally refreshing that he understood. I mean, a very poor church, Macedonia, gave more than anybody else. I think this was Second Corinthians 8. They gave more than the other churches, and they were the poorest church. So he was telling Corinth, I'm coming back there. I want you to get this offering ready. I don't want you to give of a mandate. I want to give of your heart. Here's your opportunity to show who and what you really are by your giving. I thought, wow, that is so true. It needs to just be evidence, not just so much that you speak, I'm a Christian and I go to church, but I want to show it to you in my life.
Amen. Provides direction, teaches truth. The Word of God teaches truth. It builds your faith. It changes lives. It improves your character. It calms your fears. It comforts your heart. It instills hope and it prepares you for eternity. Praise the Lord. That is the word. That is the God we serve. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us your holy word. It, there's no book like it. The Book of Mormon, the Koran, Jehovah Witness Bible. Pah! None of those come close. I've read literally each one of those in my earlier days. I've read some of the Koran not uh, relatively recently, but I did. I'm going to tell you, folks, I read the entire Mormon Bible through the Book of Mormon. I did. While I was in college, that's one thing I did from start to back. I will tell you, there is no writing like the 66 books of the Bible that are bound together. There's nothing like it. You can find sustenance. You can find strength. You can find encouragement. The wind of good things come from there. So, and I know it's not an easy I mean, it's not an easy book to just sit down with and read in five minutes. No, no, it has to be connected to your DNA. It's got to be linked up with you. It needs to become the manuscript for your life. It needs to become that, that component that you cannot live without, that something goes off in your mind every day if you do not hear from your master. And, and that's just getting into the word and allowing those words to work through your mind. Praise the Lord. I, I really... I'll say it again, and if I just end up being a broken record and this is all I say for the rest of my life, I'm doing well. Just to have that brother in God look at me and say, you're right, you're right. It's changing my life. It's changing my life. If anything in our church, we've got to be a praying church, a God-reading church, one that gets into the Word of God, that's going to bring transformation, lasting change. If you can't get anything across to your kids, if you can possibly encourage them and strengthen them to get into the Word of God, it will tweak their brain. It is truly a supernatural book that has God-given ability to transform the way you think. It is the wisest book ever written because it was given to us by God. And I truly, honestly, as I get older, there are some things my life was going so fast as a young person that I might not have believed this. But I will tell you, as an older person, getting older, I want to tell you, I recognize through wisdom that the Word of God is vital to our success as Christians. You must do it. You need to do it. It takes about two or three months of consecutive going through it for it to start working. But it is, if you want to call something magic, it is the magic pill. And now you got to take it and continue to take it. That's what it is. And I'm thankful today. Please don't be offended by that terminology of magic and all that stuff. What I'm talking about is just stop what you're thinking and get into the Word of God and let the Word of God get in you. That's it in a nutshell. And tomorrow we're going to cover, we're going to start covering some other components about how to navigate with all of the stuff. You got all the conservatives coming at you with stuff about. Uh, the end time, the end time, the end time, that's going to get confusing. And then you've got all this liberal bastion of craziness coming your way. How do you navigate? How do you navigate as a parent or as a person and as a parent? Both of those things. Praise the Lord. And I'll tell you, one of the key ingredients, I wasn't going to tell you tomorrow. Matter of fact, I'm not going to tell you tomorrow. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your mercy and your love and your word. I hope today, God, somebody's listening. I hope so. Start today, Lord God, even with you version. They can start today down that journey of success by reading your word, getting it inside of them, making a one-year commitment. I'm going to read the word of God through this year. It will change lives, a guaranteed fix. But how many will listen? I pray that everybody is listening. Help us, oh God, in all of that, Lord. And bless us throughout this week. Bless our church. Bless those that are going to work right now. Let there be a tremendous anointing and a fresh new outlook on what comes next. In Jesus' name. God bless y'all. Have a great day.